Hey ladies and gentlemen, we're out here in the wilderness garden. Um, it looks a bit chaotic, but you know, the it's like handmade forest garden. And uh, we don't use weed eater or anything like that. So all of the grass we just cut with like hedge clippers. So <laughs> it's been interesting. Um, the rain season this year was intense and just everything grew. The grass was super tall and which is fine to a point, but there's a lot of snakes and scorpions here. And so it's just better if the ground around the house is more clear. And uh, yeah, so here we are. Um, a lot of basil and moringa trees and basil, <laughs> Indian borge, moringa, moringa, Indian borge, mugwort, which needs some pruning and uh, weeding. Another moringa, moringa. <laughs> Uh, passion vine, Indian borage, the passion vine, Woo, it really took off. Uh, this is um, vetiver, purple vetiver. The root of that you can use to make woven mats for your windows and you spray them and it's like natural air conditioner. More mugwort that needs to be pruned. Dragon fruit. This actually flowered twice and gave us fruit twice. It's a fairly young, just two years it's been in the ground. And uh, yeah, another passion vine and more moringa. I'm just kind of going through what I planted here. More Indian borage. And a moringa, <laughs> and a moringa, and more Indian borage, <laughs> and another moringa, and more Indian borage. And we didn't even see them all. There's more. There's more moringa than that. Anyway, they're here. And what I wanted to share today is, and we also have, we, this is what we were going to put uh, for our water catchment. Uh, on the dome, which the canvas camp tent was going to be under. This is our plasma. These are all full. I just put a cover over that. So these are two liters each. Um, yeah. A bit more Indian borage. Aloe. And I had some senna. He got a little close to the fire. <laughs> But anyway, he's in here and another moringa. You can prune the branches. I mean, this guy needs some love. But they call this tree never die. Trying to bud. But anyway, it's still alive. So that's a branch that I started. And the aloe has been doing really nice along the side of the house. And more of the Indian borage and the mugwort, which we love so much. And more basil. And we all know these by now. I don't even have to say anything. <laughs> and uh, sawtooth coriander. More basil. I'm not actually sure what this is, but um, the landlady, she told me it was a uh, herb that they use. So I've just been letting it, like wherever it's growing, I'm just weeding around it. And there's our sunning bed for catching some sun rays. And here's another moringa. And it's about to flower. Flowering, rather. This is coming out. And there's some more up there. 
and then more of the mugwort and Indian Gorge. It smells so good. Basil, banana. Um, this has been in the ground two years now. Avocado that we brought and another avocado. Yeah. And another moringa. Oh, she's so pretty. Roselle. There was two yes last year, and now there's many. Another moringa. More Indian board. Another smaller. All the moringa were pretty much planted at the same time. It's really interesting to see which ones are thriving and which ones are so much smaller. I think that one's a rooster now. And then this little hen, maybe a little girl? <laughs> yeah, there's a little patch of Roselle. And Moringa. This is a bean that you can eat. Oh, there's some pods there. They eat it like a pea. Can we get it? I want it. Now I want it. Oh, wow. Okay. It might be happening. Oops. I was washing some baskets. Plasma wash. That's what this video is actually all about. Another moringa, another basket. Cool baskets. This one's cool too. Really simple. These are so strong. It's amazing. And I'm washing some rugs. Plasma washing rugs. So I'm just letting it soak. I really gave it a good swirl. I put in about a liter of plasma. I just want to give them a deep clean. And then when I'm done, the water, I'll just I'll take the watering can and go around the yard a bit. And just fertilize whatever I feel like fertilizing. Here's another style basket. With some of the, this is old now. Some of the uh, stain is feel, peeling off. They make their own stains here from like a lacquer from an uh, insect. So wild, you guys. Just, you never know what something is. <laughs> until you find out for yourself and then you're like dang that's not what i thought it was going to be but anyway the construction of these is freaking crazy how strong they are i've filled this with uh one two three four six seven nine, nine, 24 liters of uh enzyme or plasma all those milk crates that's actually why i had these made they fit the four the two liter milk jugs perfectly um and then when I could stack them like side by side like that, but it was so heavy. Oh my gosh. And uh, I, I just found a better use for these lighter baskets. They're great to do yard work. And then upgraded the plasma to the crates, which was really a good idea. <laughs> baskets, Ooh, the baskets are so awesome. But what I really wanted to talk about was the plasma and the laundry so amazing and so amazing to use it for fertilizer in your garden and I use this for my outdoor bathtub too so I'll 
wash this out and then in the morning I'll fill it up with water and let the sun hit it and then in the because it's cool out right now this is a dry season so then in the heat of the day when it's hot I'll come out here in the sun and have like a hot sauna bath and I'll just bring a few hemp and linen towels that I have and I'll put them in the water with me so I can cover myself up from the sun if I want to or expose myself to the sun if I want to and it is amazing you must give yourself this gift <laughs> anyway so I'm warming up for one of those to happen really soon and uh, the, the, this is actually a cement mixing bin um, and they're so useful around the property not just for uh, this this is also part of a composting system that I use so I have um, several others if you invert these on top of one another they stay dry from the rain and then you flip that lid off and you have like a whole area there for um, if you're gonna pot something up it's like a huge work bin that you instantly have and your compost is right there so yeah I use um, two of them for every Bokashi bin that I have so I have four and it's kind of excessive actually <laughs> you could probably run a restaurant with that capacity but I was uh, I set up that many because I was doing a lot of experimental stuff, including humanure. So I spent a year. Um, I don't do it anymore just because uh, a lot of things going on. But um, yeah, the humanure was um, another huge experiment. So I, I had multiple bins because I wanted to keep the humanure separate. Um, just so I could really get used to uh, processing that as a as an individual thing, uh, separate from kitchen waste. Fascinating stuff, people. <laughs> when I was done, I was like, "Wow, I could be living in a third floor uh, apartment doing this," and I don't think anybody would know. Um, pretty wild pretty wild experience. Anyway, catch you guys next time on another episode of Anna Seahawk.